In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the internal battery on the iPhone 13. This one has come up with a service message at 79% maximum capacity, so we're going to get this one swapped out. We recommend replacing them when they get below 80%, although that's just a guide mark. Obviously, you will know better of when a battery needs replacing. To start off the job, I'm going to remove the two screws either side of the lightning connector at the bottom of the phone. These are pentalobe screws, so you will need a specialist screwdriver to remove them. I'll pop a link in the description below for all the tools that I use in the video and where you can buy them. To access the battery, we need to remove the screen, which allows us access to the phone. And to do that, I'm going to use a suction cup attached to the bottom third of the device. Then I'm going to use a single-sided razor blade. I'm going to insert it into the very small gap between the edge of the screen and the bottom of the frame or the edge of the chassis. Once you've got that, we can add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol, and that's just gonna soak in that little gap what we just created. The next job that we need to do is sort of a lifting with the suction cup, sort of prying back with the suction cup, and then pulling back on the razor blade. And what that's gonna do, because of the alcohol what's in it, it's just gonna pop that screen out of the frame. Make sure that the, the blade is pushed flat down against the bottom of the frame. If it's not flat, then it will cause you problems. But you can see this has started to lift now and we can insert the blade a little bit further. The purpose of this is to create a, a gap large enough for us to fit this little plastic guitar pick into. And now that we've got that gap, we're gonna begin running that just a couple of millimeters down the edge of the device. There's a very specific reason that I don't use heat to open these up anymore. And that's because I find that the heat will separate the frame from the glass of the screen and cause a lot more problems than the risk of the damage what I've doing it the method that I've just done there. Now, it does take a bit of practice to do that method, but I have found that it's the safest way to remove the screen without causing any green lines, pink lines, yellow lines. And look, you can see we've got no lines on the screen. There's no damage to the screen. The screen protector is a little bit damaged and the customer has asked for us to re replace that. But we'll do that obviously after the repair is complete. Now that we're at the top of the device, we've run the pick around all the edges and then I'm gonna lift it up from the bottom just a little bit. You can wiggle it a little bit just to loosen it. But what you wanna do is insert that pick again, nice and flat, and it's just gonna pop those. You see those little catch things there? It's gonna pop those out. So you're just pushing it that way a little bit and it pops them out allowing you to open it up very, very easy, just like that. Now I'm gonna leave this suction cup attached to the phone. If you're not using a suction cup, then use a weighted object behind the screen to help you prop it up. Now that we're into the device, we need to remove the screen to get it out of the way so we don't cause any damage. To do that, we need to remove these three crosshead screws just here, holding down the shield. Go ahead and get those out of the way. Then use tweezers to lift up that shield, store that with the screws. Then we're going to use a little plastic prying tool to disconnect the battery first of all so that isolates power from the device then we can disconnect this connector just here that is for the screen get that out of the way before you try and take the screen away we well, need to remove the three more screws that are holding down the shield up the top there is two crosshead screws and one tri-wing screw holding that down get those out of the way and do the same with your tweezers get it lifted out a bit awkward because there's a little hooky catch thing on this one and the screw also disappeared somewhere in the phone we'll find that once we've lifted that up just pop that little connector there and then that means that we can remove the screen let me just find that screw what we lost that's the one and now in terms of removing the battery you can actually see that this one's a little bit puffy and swollen up i'm going to add some drops of isopropyl alcohol directly under the battery So now I've left that alcohol soaking in underneath the battery for the last five minutes. I'm not even going to bother trying to pull on the pull tabs. The basic idea is that you can lift up these little, little bits of tape and then pull that out. It just doesn't work on these models. Instead, I use the guitar pick that we opened up the phone with and I insert it up this top end. And what you're going to do is just pry it back very gently and you'll find that it comes away real easy. If you want to help it along, you can get the plastic stick under it and you'll notice, look, it just pulls away. It doesn't bend the battery, it doesn't damage the battery removing it like that. It's just a lot easier 
than relying on those pull tabs that just don't work. Now, now that this battery is removed, dispose of it using your local recycling instructions for lithium ion batteries. The canal's always a good idea. And then remove any of the leftover tape. Just gonna carry on removing the rest of the adhesive that's left behind. And trust me, this is a lot easier than trying to pull those pull tabs out and then only for them to snap. So the next thing that we need to do on this device is clean up all this adhesive that's left behind. I use one of these exacto blades what's 4a inside and i kept wanting to say pixel 4a because i've just been talking about a google pixel but i think it's a it's number 4a exacto blade just take your time when you are cutting away at this adhesive it's easy to slip and to break buttons or batteries if you've installed the new battery already i would go for it this time because obviously the battery's out of the way and there's less chance of stabbing a hole in it yeah, just work your way around, just get as much of the adhesive off as you possibly can. Just be careful around that front camera area too. It gets a little bit awkward because that is made out of plastic, so don't chew the uh, don't chew the plastic up too much with the blade, or don't chew the plastic up at all with the blade. That's my advice. But it does it does sometimes take a little chip out. Don't worry too much, but like I say, don't butcher it. You just got to be gentle with this. I think sometimes I forget. That I make these things probably look easy because I do it all day every day so you, there is an element of you really need to take your time with this so the the flip side of it is that if I didn't make it look easy and I butchered it you guys would just watch because the, you're watching me butcher phone anyway now that all that's removed you can see there's quite a lot of dust and dirt left behind add some isopropyl alcohol and then use a cleaning brush or a cotton bud to get all that dirt, detritus, and shit off of that edge there. Get it real nice and clean. I'm sorry that I said cuss word. But that's what it is. Pooey fingers, when you're sat on the toilet and you're using your phone, when you're in a dusty environment, when you're using your phone, that's what all those things are. And you might be thinking, why aren't you wearing gloves then? Well, I'll just wash my hands after, shall I? I'm going to just really refine the cleaning of this with a cotton board and just get the very last of the dust and crap out of there with the softer cotton tip on this. Again, be careful around the camera area. And then let that dry. It's important to let that dry because that alcohol will stop the sticker sticking to it. So, in the meantime, while we're waiting for that to dry, it'd be a good idea to install the new battery. The new battery that we're using in this video is a genuine Apple replacement battery. This video is sponsored by Mobile Centrix UK. They are the supplier for this battery and it comes with replacement screws, should you lose them. The replacement battery wrapped in this nice bit of plastic to keep it protected. And then you might be thinking, what the hell is this white thing on top of the battery? Well, that's the spacing block. That little bit there and that bit, little bit there needs to sit tight to the board and the bottom speaker. That's going to act as a guide, making sure that the battery sits exactly where you want it to sit. On the back, you've got some plastic film. Between the battery and the plastic film, there's the adhesive. That is what sticks the battery into place. Peel back the plastic film like that and then... We're gonna line this up on that edge, line it up on the bottom edge, and the rest of it is gonna stick into place. You can now press down, applying pressure where the bits of adhesive are, so here and here. Just give it a good press down, make sure that it's sat properly, and then you can wiggle these guys out. Like I say, this part is available on mobilecentricuk.com. I'll put a link in the description below. You can alternatively use an aftermarket part as well, However, that will come up with a non-genuine part warning. And after I've done the installation, I'm gonna calibrate this battery. You will not be able to do that if you use an aftermarket battery. You may pay 10 to 20 pounds for an aftermarket battery. These genuine ones usually come in at about 50 pounds. I don't know how that converts to currencies around the world, but if you use Google, you'll be able to do that as well. So now that we've installed that battery, I'm not gonna plug it in just yet because we'll plug it in once we've connected the screen. 
We are, however, going to install one of these. This is the dust and moisture resistant seal. This is my only qualm with the ones that come from Mobile Centrix. They don't come with a seal. Fortunately, I've got a wall full of seal or a, a shelf. I say a wall, it's a shelf. I'm really playing that strong there. I've got a shelf what's full of uh, the seals for these. Line it up in the bottom left corner. Allow it to line up along all the rest of the edges. And then look at that. It sits nicely. I'm gonna use the plastic spudger to push it down. Make sure that it's sat really nice and flat. I'm using the flat end of the plastic spudger and I'm just making sure that it sits nicely. Exactly where I want it to sit. And then I can peel off this top part of the film. With that in place, a good idea, can you see all this? You remember we were talking about dust and crap, right? A good idea is gonna to be to get your brush and just brush the edge of the screen. Cause it sticks there as well, look. Look at that mess. It's filthy. Right, so just clean that up as well before you install it back onto the phone. To install it back on the, onto the phone, it's very self-explanatory. Connect this connector here, which is for the display and push it down just like connecting two pieces of Lego. Now we're gonna go up to the top and we're gonna connect this one. This one's a bit more awkward. You might have to guide it in with some tweezers, but once it's lined up, put pressure on it and connect it again, like two pieces of Legos. Now we use the shield. With this shield, make sure that it sits on top of that cable. I, it's hard to explain it because I've only got two hands. On top of this cable, but then around that hooky bit there. So to get it to attach on the hooky bit, it's a bit awkward. But you're gonna to have to put it in, offer it up at an angle, allow it to hook on, and then push it down. Keep it, keep pressure on it whilst you at least get one screw in. The one screw that I'm gonna get in is the crosshead one, which sits just there. I picked that up with the tri-wing screwdriver. I was looking for the tri-wing one, and I got the wrong one. Crosshead one goes in there, tighten it up. Then you've got the tri-wing one, which goes top right. And then we have got one more, which goes just here. Now, moving down, we're gonna reconnect the battery. If you've lined everything up, that should just press into place real simple. You don't have to move it around at all. I've, I'm yet to have one of these batteries, what I've got to mess about with the cable for. They're usually like literally perfectly aligned. Now we've got that shape shield, plonk it into place, and you've got the three crosshead screws, which hold that one down. With those tightened down, it's always a good idea to get a bit of clean cloth and just wipe down, get rid of your DNA. You don't want to be leaving your fingerprints all over the device. Finally, we need to remove the last of the film. So that comes off, usually you can snap it off, close the screen halfway, and then it'll snap off at right in an awkward spot. But then we can grab hold of it again, don't drop it and peel the rest of it off. Last bit is down the bottom, and then to stick the screen back down. Just take your time here, don't rush it. Close it down softly. Get this top bit, line it up, put a little bit of pressure. Look, I'm not squeezing hard here, I'm just pushing it down so it sits flush. Then we're gonna offer up the bottom of the screen. You're gonna make sure that the screen cable is not tucked up ready to be damaged by you pushing down and then you can just push down gently either side make sure that it sits in place if you can't push it down gently there's probably something blocking it and you're going to break something so just take your time i really really cannot say that enough just take your time there's no need to break things when we're fixing them these two screws go either side of the lightning connector now with the pentalobe screwdriver and then you can turn the phone on. What you might notice is the phone does not turn on with the power button. That's okay. Just plug the cable in and it will turn on. I don't know why it doesn't always work with the uh, power button after it's been disconnected. I imagine it's something to do with the, um, I, mean, I think that's a 1.8 line what gets shorted out. If it gets shorted out in the meantime, it's already short and it doesn't work. So you just have to turn it on. One thing I will tell you, these genuine batteries always come with very little charge on them. This one's on 15%, so there's not enough for me to calibrate it. So now that we're into the phone, we're gonna to go to settings. So you're gonna go general, about, and then 18.6. And you see how this is grayed out for now? 
that's because the battery is not charged up to 20 percent minimum there is another way i think it works if you turn the phone off unplug it now i think you have to wait a few moments and you can force it into self repair mode diagnostic mode whatever you want to call it mode and the way you do that now is pressing and holding volume up and volume down and plugging the device in you might have to wait a minute because it might not have been fully off i'm pretty sure it was though there we go when you get the apple logo don't forget that you need to unhold release is the word that i'm looking for release up and down volume now it's going to hang on the apple logo for a little while and you might think oh my god something wrong with my phone but it's not it's going to go into diagnostic mode you may go gray and you may become old before it does go into diagnostic mode but trust me it will go in there eventually and when it is there you just choose continue you might never seen this before put your wi-fi network in make sure that you're connected to a real wi-fi network not a hotspot because it will not work with hotspot it will then connect to apple support and it allow you to finish repair it'll then configure this is where it's detecting what parts are new and what parts are genuine once it's done that it should allow us to finish the repair of the battery so it's a genuine apple part we can do that and it should complete the repair now i'm not sure if it does because of the battery health battery percent but it looks like it's finishing if it's not finishing usually it'll load a tiny bit and then force you to restart the phone if it does that it means that it's not completed the repair properly other things that are worth mentioning what sometimes stop um configuration happening if you install multiple parts at once it can really mess it up also if you install an aftermarket screen and a genuine battery it can cause you problems as well so just bear that in mind if it's not working there's a couple of little troubleshooting steps there maybe in the future i'll do a full video on troubleshooting apple's self-service self-repair mode but for now this repair is just about complete i'm just going to show you that it's gone back to 100 percent hopefully i won't get old and die before it turns on nope battery battery health and charging 100 percent that's it thanks for watching the video and see you in the next one